My name is Samuel Halligan. I'm a graduate intern for New Student Programs, and my pronouns are he, him, his. We are so glad that you're joining us today for today's session on Living on Campus. During this session, representatives from campus residences will be presenting and answering any questions you may have related to campus living. Additionally, we will also have some of our peer assistant leaders here to answer questions from a student perspective. Campus residences can now uh, present. Probably help if I unmute myself, you know. <laughs> All right, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us. My name is Mason Prada. My pronouns are he, him, his, um, and I work with campus residences. I'm joined today by Karan. Hi all, my name is Karan Green. I am a residence hall director in campus residences and my pronouns are he, him, his as well. Awesome, so today we have a living on campus presentation for you all. Uh, it's relatively brief. Karan and I are just gonna bounce back and forth and go through it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop questions in the chat. We do have a couple other friends of ours working in the chat answering questions behind the scenes. So feel free to do that um, as soon as anything pops up. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and dive right in. Um, overall, some of the things we're gonna be going over, we'll be talking about some, you guessed it, COVID-19 info. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the general benefits of living on campus, some community amenities. Uh, we have a little bit of info regarding housing selection and like move in, things like that. And then toward the end, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the campus resident staff and what we do for you all here on campus, as well as how to get involved on campus. So starting right off with all of the COVID-19 policies, uh, we put together this brief snapshot of what they look like right now. Um, however, we would like to say, just make sure to take all of this with a grain of salt. You know, we still have the whole summer to get through. And as I'm sure you all know, seeing the news, things are changing. So this is what the policies are as of right now. Some of these may change, all of these may change, none of them may change before we get here in the fall. Um, it's tough to say right now, um, but this is where we're at so far. So in order to move in as of right now, students will have to provide a negative COVID-19 PCR test within seven days of their arrival. Um, so if you move in on a Tuesday, you have up to the previous Tuesday to have gotten the test and received the negative result. Um, and then we have the two bullets here. Once you're moved in, there is an app that will go on your phone, the Campus Clear Health Screening app that you'll complete every day. Essentially, it's a symptom tracker, so you would pull it up and it'll ask if you're experiencing any symptoms, things like that. You literally will just fill that out every morning before you go about your day um, and before you leave your room. Also, once you're moved in, you will participate in free on-campus COVID surveillance testing. Um, that's provided to you all as students. Um, the frequency, uh, like I said, as of right now, it was twice a week. That may be the same. It may not be the same when we hit the fall. It's tough to say. Um, in addition to that, general policies uh, that will be in place for the first two weeks of class, there will be no overnight guests whatsoever in the residence halls. Um, that includes, you know, other residential students, students who might live off campus or non-students. Um, and then after that, it's typically just only residential students. Again, that may change. Um, you will be expected to wear a face mask covering your nose and mouth anytime you're outside of your sleeping quarters or your bedroom. Um, that includes within your residence hall. So, you know, we'll talk more about the living styles a little later, but if you live in one of the communal areas and you're going to the bathroom, the second you leave your room, you still have to have a face mask on, even though you're in your own building and on your own floor. And then as far as move-in day goes, you will be allowed up to two family members to assist you with moving in um, on move-in day. And again, that will all be you know, contingent upon the people assisting you, following all of these policies as well, wearing face masks, et cetera. Um, some more general COVID-19 information. Um, you know, This is just the typical stuff that we encourage everybody to do day in and day out. Always wash your hands regularly with soap and water make sure to have some kind of hand sanitizer available, use that as you see fit. Um, wearing facial coverings is gonna be super important as I'm sure you all are super aware at this point. Um, if you're vaccinated already be before getting here to campus, you will be able to submit your vaccination records to Student Health uh, via their Student Health Services MediCap portal. 
I believe they'll be sending more info about that if they haven't already at some point over the summer that will explain to you exactly how to do that. Um, if you are currently an, an international student and you are currently residing outside of the United States and you don't have access to one of the three approved vaccines, which are Johnson & Johnson, Moderna, or Pfizer, or if you received a different vaccine, um, the campus will provide additional guidance soon. So that's just something to keep an eye on your email, keep an eye out for that info. Um, they'll get it to you as soon as we have it. Um, and then we'll offer vaccines upon arrival at Stony Brook if you don't have access to a vaccine prior to getting here. Um, some of the general benefits of living on campus. Um, so really what it boils down to is, you know, there's the community, the activities, all of the fun stuff that we're going to talk about. But in addition to that, living on campus, studies and research shows that students who live on campus typically have a higher GPA. Um, and a lot of that is due to you're closer to resources, you have more access to these resources, you have more access to a lot of the student staff and other professional personnel who are looking out for you and trying to make sure that your experience is the best and, you know, most safe, secure and healthy as possible. Um, we have more than 3000 programs here on campus. I think that's throughout a typical year. Um, and there's all kinds of seemingly an endless pool of leadership and employment opportunities here on campus as well. All things that contribute to, you know, growth, development, and success. Um, one of those resources that I spoke of, one of the big ones is the residential tutoring centers, uh, which we have here on campus. They are provided by campus residences as well as academic success and tutoring center. Um, they offer tutoring opportunities. I believe it's typically like after hours type is like their focus. Um, and it's, it's offered to students who have specific questions pertaining to like courses like a chem course or a math or physics. Um, it's always drop in hours. They have online tutoring available. This link here, uh, which I don't know if somebody can drop in the chat at the moment or not, but there is a page for them on the website. If you just look up the Stony Brook website, residential tutoring centers, there's all kinds of information on that there. All right, so now we're going to talk about um, community living and the differences in our apartments, our suites, and our corridor style living. So community engagement. Um, so Stony Brook University Residential Programs Department will provide co-curricular environments where all residents can find their homes on campus. We create a caring and inclusive community through the active participation to all of all community members. We provide opportunities for residents to create experiences with fellow members of their community at all levels of engagement, such as individual peer relationships and through residential program staff. So your floor, your building, your area, your campus at large. And so how you can help with us to meet this goal is to commit to helping us help you by actually participate, participating sorry, in our programs, taking advantage of opportunities and resources, being open to the opportunity to learn and engage with new experiences, understand the impact you have on your new community because you will have an impact, the respect of yourself and of your peers, and then follow the terms of occupancy and the code of student conduct, which you can find online. So the first year experience, so the first year living community fosters success and growth in students within this community. Participants will have the opportunity to develop relationships with their peers by engaging in programs, events, and experiences that are specifically targeted to their needs. The students are housed in theme style housing. So um, as a first year student, you, you can be in one of four areas. So you can be in our Roosevelt community, which will focus on creativity, technology, and innovation. You can be our Mendelssohn community, which focuses on social justice, equity, and, and act and ethics. Or you can be in our age community, which focuses on global health, wellness, and community. And then um, for those of you who are in the honors program, you will um, be in our Chavez Tubman and Nobel Hall community, more specifically, you'll be in Yang Hall, which will um, take a look and help you foster relationships with other honor students and um, as you start to build that experience here at Stony Brook. Um, so as you start to move um, up in um, your life here at Stony Brook, you can move into what we call the second year living experience or 2YLC. So this is a program designed to foster success and growth in students during their second year of college. 
within this community, participants will have the opportunity to develop relationships with their peers by engaging in programs, events, and experiences that are specifically targeted to their goals. The program also focuses on reflection of these experiences and how they will lead to future success. So participants of the 2YLC are required to go to a set number of events over the course of each semester. And these events will focus on academic domains, career exploration, leadership in social justice and wellness. Um, your RA or your floor um, is actually going to um, be tied to a career community. So if you are someone who is coming to Stony Brook and like, I really want to get involved um, with some medical sciences, or you really want to get involved with engineering, there's going to be a specific RA who is tied to that career community with our career development center, who is going to be able to help you foster that relationship with faculty and other students and alumni from that program. So our types of living style. So there's the corridor style. This is like your most general. Um, you know, you look online or you see the all the college shows. Corridor style is typically what you see. It's the single, the double rooms. You have community bathrooms. There's the in lounges. It's the gender by floor or wing. And then you typically have about 30 um, to 50 residents per corridor. Well, there is an asterisk by wing. Um, because there are some spaces inside of our communities that are gender inclusive. We also have suite style, which are singles and double rooms. These are shared bathroom and living um, room inside a suite. They're gender by the suite and they're four to six residents per suite. And then our apartments are single and double rooms. They're single bedrooms, living room, dining area, and a full kitchen. Gender by apartment and then four to six residents are going to live here as well. So our amenities um, go by our building. Um, so you could have a recreation room, like you, we have ping pong tables in a lot of them. Um, there might be a pool table in there for you to hang out. There might be a TV and projector. Um, there's the classroom. Um, each building is going to have some type of classroom um, thing. And so you will be able to go in there and study with your um, classmates or just sit in there and have community. There's lounges at the end of each hallway. There are study rooms. Each building does have a laundry room, which is free of charge to students. Um, and then you have Wi-Fi and cable TV. And then we also have HBO Max. So, you know, if you love HBO, I was just watching Insecure last night. But if you love HBO, definitely campus for you. And so your amenities by your community. Um, so you're gonna have a computing center. Each community on campus does have its own individualized community inside somewhere in one of the buildings. It might not be your specific building, but you won't have to walk too far. There's a resident parking lot right next to your um, building if you are one of those students who are choosing to drive. We do have some sports courts. So we have sand volleyball, we have tennis, which is one of my favorite sports, volleyball and basketball. Uh, we do have nearby dining locations. So we have east side dining and west side dining. Um, and then the mail room by community. So your mail will not come to your residence hall. It will go to a mail room, be able to go pick it up. They will send you an email. If you have any mail from that day, you go pick it up with your Stony Brook ID. And then the residential fitness centers, um, are in each community as well for you to be able to work out um, with weight equipment, um, treadmills, things like that. Do want to point out that this may be limited in capacity according to COVID-19 policy. So, you know, in the past, a lot of people could be in there. Now, because of COVID-19, we are being cautious of how many people are actually allowed in there um, for your safety. So where will you live as a student, as a first year? So first year students will be expected to live in one of our communities associated with the three undergraduate colleges. So you're gonna live in the corridor style, the double occupancy rooms. Um, and this will be really a great opportunity um, to build connection and community in your first year with a larger population of students. Coming to college can be scary, um, but really um, foster relationship with people who are on your floor within your building or within your community as a whole. Um, it's going to be really beneficial for you to creating new friends here at Stony Brook. And if you are a new transfer and or a continuous student, uh, you'll be predominantly in our suite style living. Um, some students will still live in corridor, 
Um, you might be able to live in West Apartments um, that provides full kitchen. You must have 57 or more credits cleared on your transcript to actually be allowed into the West Apartments. And then mainly double occupancy rooms, except for those in Chavez and Tubman Halls are West Apartments. So some of those are suite style Chavez, Chavez and Tubman are all single style um, rooms. And then to live in these communities, again, you must have 57 or more credits. And so if you have not and you need to um, fill out your housing application, can someone put this into the into the chat as well? So you can go in here to your housing portal and you can um, sign up for housing, pay your housing deposit and things like that. Um, you'll, sign, you'll sign in using your Stony Brook um, net ID and your password. And then important information about our fall 2021 new student housing application can be found online at that link as well. So someone will drop down a link, but if you have not signed up for housing or you need help, um, this should be your first place to go. Cool. So now I'm going to talk about a little bit about what to expect, um, you know, to find inside your room and then also what things you should be bringing with you uh, and should not be bringing with you when you arrive. Um, so as a general, uh, not really a general rule, but at, at base, this is what's provided in each of the different types of rooms. So if you're living in a corridor style room, um, you're going to have a bed frame, there'll be a mattress on the bed. You're going to have a dresser, a nightstand, a computer desk with a chair. And then what you'll have is either there's a closet built into the room or you'll have an armoire, which is like a closet, but separate, like it's not actually attached to the wall. Um, so that's the base, what you have for furniture in every room, you know, and that'll be regardless if you're in a single or a double. Um, if you're in a double, then they will just be double of all of that because there'd be one for both of you. Um, in suite style, it's... Each individual room is the exact same setup as corridor. You're going to have the bed, mattress, nightstand, closet, all of that. Um, suite style differs in that there's also a common space that kind of connects everything. So you'll have some form of a couch or a love seat or chairs, some combination of all of that in the common room, as well as a coffee table. Um, and then the apartments are the same as suite style. Um, you have all the things in the bedroom, all of the things in the common room. Um, but then in the apartments, you also have a dining table, six dining chairs, refrigerator, microwave, and an electric stove and oven, you know, like you would see in really any kind of kitchen. Uh, and then as far as what are things you should and probably should not bring, um, big things you should absolutely bring is twin XL bedding. That's the size of all the beds, mattresses, and bed frames here. Um, and, you know, you're not going to want to sleep on a bare mattress, so definitely bring some kind of bedding, you know, for sure. Shower shoes are my recommendation, especially for those of you living in corridor, but really anybody who's living anywhere where you share a shower. Um, you know, the showers get cleaned and like, yes, but remember, you know, it's a lot of people using those showers theoretically every day. So shower shoes are like a staple for on-campus living. You're going to want to bring things like towels, pillows, your toiletries, basic stuff, clothes hangers if you need them. Um, a laundry hamper and laundry detergent. Uh, we do have free laundry for use of the machines. However, I don't think any of the laundry rooms, I know mine don't, none of the laundry rooms provide detergent or anything, nor do you have access to that in the buildings. So be sure to bring some kind of laundry detergent. Um, personally, I recommend getting the, uh, the like scent free stuff, you know, the, the like all clear, the tied white pods, that's usually the best stuff. Um, and then also bring some kind of a power strip. Uh, make sure it's a power strip with a surge protector on it. Usually that's the one that has the button on it. Um, because if you look over in the prohibited items, extension cords are not allowed. So those fancy old, I think they're usually like green and brown, like extension cords you see that has just like the one plug at the end or two. Um, those are not allowed just because they are typically significantly less safe than a power strip that's surge protected. Um, so those are things that, you know, it's a fire hazard, therefore you wouldn't be allowed to have it in the building. Um, and then again, other multi-plug adapters, things that aren't surge protected, pose a higher fire risk, therefore are not allowed. Um, another big thing, really any electrical appliances, especially anything that generates heat. So that's going to be, you know, like your hot plates, pressure cookers, air fryers, crock pots, microwaves, 
things like that. With microwaves, there is a small exception, which I'll talk about in a second. But by and large, you shouldn't just be strolling in with a, a whole microwave from Target. Um, additionally, candles, again, with the fire safety, you know, candles just have an open flame on them. So they're a pretty high fire risk. Um, therefore, they're not allowed. Um, plug in air fresheners as well. There's certain types, I think, if you look in the terms of occupancy that you can have, but generally the ones you plug in and they just hang on the wall, not allowed because, again, they're a fire risk. Same thing, foam and gel mattress toppers, huge fire risk. They burn really, really easily. Um, any furniture not authorized by the university, so you don't, please don't just stroll up with a whole couch, futon, you know, reclining chair, your lazy boy, leave that at home. Um, again, air fryers are really big right now, so I just want to emphasize air fryers fall under, you know, like the appliances, like toasters, toaster ovens, things like that. It's heat generating and is therefore not allowed in the buildings. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Things that you don't necessarily have to bring, but, you know, if you can, it's recommended to make your time here more enjoyable. Um, bring some kind of a TV, a cable cord, the coaxial cable. Um, also, people recommend like a Roku or a Fire Stick or well, Apple TV, you know, whichever one of the 30 million streaming devices there are. Those are great because you can connect it right to the Wi-Fi. And then like Karan said, we have HBO Max included. So like you could just pop HBO Max right on, you know, that, have it right on your TV all the time. Um, you can also have a small, like a mini fridge, like you see in all of the photos and all of the things. Um, and they go... I believe the limit is up to three cubic feet on those off the top of my head. Don't quote me, double check the terms of occupancy because that will have the most correct information. I believe it's three cubic feet is the max. Um, additionally, you can have some kind of a coffee maker as long as it has an automatic shutoff. So things like a Keurig or if you have just like one of the, the electric water kettles um, as long as it will automatically shut off if left alone, that will be allowed. Anything that will just stay hot, you know, like if you leave it on and it's just going to sit there and stay hot, wouldn't be allowed because, again, fire risk. Um, we offer micro fridges through um, FSA, which is, uh, I don't remember what FSA stands for. Karan, do you know? Faculty Staff Association. There it is. Faculty Staff Association. They offer micro fridges for students uh, that you can rent for the semester or for the year. Basically, a micro fridge is a microwave and a fridge combined. Um, so it's just a, a smaller microwave attached to the top of a mini fridge. Um, that's something that is acceptable because it meets all of the fire specifications that have been set by the state. So ultimately, in terms of having, you know, in my opinion, in terms of you get the microwave, you have the mini fridge, that's the most ideal scenario. And then you don't have to worry about you know, does it meet the standards? Is it allowed? Is it not allowed? Because boom, FSA has already approved it. Um, Just want to point out for your surge for, for power strips, we do have a surge protector exchange program with our safety and support department. When you get here in the fall, they'll send you an email. If you have brought a power strip, they will actually exchange it for you. Just fill out a form and they will come to you and exchange your <clears throat> power strip out for you. Correct. Um, and the reason that we emphasize all of this is because in all of our areas, we do health and safety checks um, at a minimum twice per semester. I believe the apartments do it more frequently. I think they do it every month, something like that. Um, but in general, they're done at a minimum twice a semester. Oh yeah, it says right there or every month. Um, and it's usually mid semester and then at the end of the semester. Um, and that's the point in time where, you know, basically we would check everybody's rooms to make sure that there aren't any of these prohibited items that are posing some kind of a safety risk to, you know, you and your roommate, everybody else in the building, all of that stuff. Um, and again, Karan mentioned earlier, the terms of occupancy, that's essentially all of the housing related, you know, rules and regulations. It's a little more heavily focused on stuff like this, like what is allowed and not allowed within the residence halls, whereas the code of student conduct is more broadly applicable to all of campus. Um, and then I see, yes, Karan put more info about the refrigerators in the chat there. Um, so yeah, again, if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to ask in the chat or feel free to Google Stony Brook Terms of Occupancy and you can just look right in there. They update it every year and it has all the information you will need. Additionally, our campus is tobacco free. 
um, that you know is relatively self-explanatory. Um, but to be more clear, it includes any tobacco and tobacco derived products, including but not limited to cigarettes, e-cigarettes, jewels, vapes, uh, cigars, hookah, chewing tobacco, things like that. Um, you know, and it's not, <clears throat> yeah, it's smoke and tobacco free. So anything you smoke, anything that contains tobacco shouldn't be anywhere on campus. And then again, to emphasize that's campus, not just the building. So on campus, you shouldn't be smoking cigarettes, not just in your building, it should be nowhere on campus. Um, and again, that's just to keep the air clean, to keep everybody safe and healthy. Um, it's not really a judgment call on anybody in particular, it's a safety thing. Um, and then if they're, if smoking cessation or tobacco cessation, trying to quit, if that's something you're interested in, CPO does have resources available, um, you can check out this stonybrook.edu slash tobacco free, that link at the bottom, there's more info on that information there. I know I said CPO, CPO is the Center for Prevention and Outreach. I realize I didn't clarify that. In addition, you know, the, the next logical step is we are also cannabis free. Um, so use and possession of cannabis on Stony Brook's campus remains prohibited under federal law. The you can read here, but basically the long and short of it is, is because we're a state university, you know, and we receive deal with federal funding, we abide by federal laws. So regardless of any changes made at the state level regarding cannabis, we stick by the federal, which is still it's prohibited. Um, so again, use possession, cultivation, sale of any marijuana, cannabis products, items, what have you, paraphernalia. Uh, remains all prohibited on SUNY campuses and is subject to disciplinary action under the Code of Student Responsibility. Um, this is something that, again, may change, who knows, but as of right now, this is where it's at. Um, and that includes all SUNY, SUNY, SUNY property, <laughs> um, any SUNY property, so that's going to be any of the residence halls, apartments, offices, anywhere on campus, any buildings that are owned by the university or the SUNY system, um, parking lots and at any SUNY associated event. So even if it's something off campus, if it's say a Stony Brook hosted event somewhere off campus, still not allowed. Um, and then again, Center Prevention and Outreach uh, continuously offers educational programs focused on smoking, tobacco, cannabis, marijuana, all of that, which you can also find not only on their webpage within the website, but also on SB Engaged and Corp. All right, so office staff. Who are we who work in campus residents? We are driven, curious, hands-on, welcoming, and proud of all the wonderful Seawolves um, who come and live with us and work with us here in campus residences. So what are professional staff? So these are going to be people who are your assistant directors of residence life. Um, there's an area office manager, the residence hall director, a faculty director, facilities manager, custodial supervisor. One of the people that you're really going to see day to day is your residence hall director. Um, right now, like my residents can walk past my office, see me, they can wave, they can stop in, um, but your residence hall director is gonna be really visible. Your area office manager is someone you might interact with each day if you lose your keys because um, they'll give you a key to get back into the building, or if you lose your ID card, they can give you a card to get actually into the building. But they're also here um, just to help you with any general questions that you have. Um, and then your custodial supervisor, facility manager, you really want to see them. Um, our student staff who works with us, we do have office assistants. So those office assistants work with our residence hall directors and area office managers and their offices assisting them. And then each building has um, anywhere from six to 14 um, RAs that work in that building and they are there to support you. They are there for your development. When you are having um, roommate conflicts or when you are, um, when you need advice on homework or you need a resource, your residence systems are your first choice. These are current students um, who have went through a robust training to be there for you and your resident assistants work directly with your residence hall directors in each of your buildings. How can we help you? So we can help you with lockouts. You get, you're going to get locked out. I get locked out of my apartment. Heck, I was locked out of my building today. I didn't know where my ID was. So I went to the area office and they let me into my building. When you um, 
when you come, something's probably going to happen in your room. Uh, you want your bed um, lowered or raised or a light goes out, you're going to need to submit a maintenance request. We can help you with that. And if you just have general questions like, hey, where's this building on campus? Do you know anybody that I can go to for this? We are all here to help you for that. Each community has an office that is open from 8.30 to 5 p.m. on Monday through Friday. And then there's a resident assistant office, and this is per building. So each building has its own RA office, and that's open every day from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. Office hours, RAs are in there. You can check out games out of there. That's where you check out, um, you know, the pool sticks or the ping pong stuff um, for you to play with. And then from 11 p.m. to 8.30 a.m. and 24 hours on weekend, our RAs are available via phone and they will come help you with any type of emergency. So if you get locked out of the building at 1 a.m., trust and believe that there are at least there's someone on duty that will let you into our buildings. So facilities and custodial crews, so full-time facilities and custodial staff dedicated to maintaining and enhancing the residential experience. So custodial cleaning crews, so suite and apartment style bathrooms, you are going to get clean weekly. That does not substitute you cleaning your own bathroom, but if you live in a suite style building, you will be able to get your suite clean um, weekly. They will come in there, change your toilet paper, things like that, and they will also get a general wipe down and cleaning. Um, corridor style bathrooms, this is daily. Most of the time, these are getting cleaned two to four times throughout the day by our custodial workers. Um, our common areas such as lounge, classroom, and trash rooms are getting cleaned daily. Our door handles, high touch areas are getting cleaned multiple times per day. So like there's an elevator in buildings, the front doors of the buildings, the linnell. Now linnell, you don't know what that is. What you tap your ID on to get into the building, that is all getting cleaned daily to make sure that there is no type of multiple touch points that you are interacting with other people. Cool. And then also, as we mentioned earlier, getting involved on campus is super encouraged and honestly, super easy. Uh, this list right here is in no way, shape or form exhaustive. This is a very, very small, you know, snapshot of some of the clubs and organizations that are available, you know, in available, yeah, available was the only word I got to you as a student on campus. <laughs> I, there was a second word, but I lost it. It's, it's whatever, it's cool. Um, but yeah, as you can see here, I mean, this is a, a sampling. There's over 300 clubs and organizations here on campus. Um, you know, really, if, if it's something you want to do, there's probably already a club. And if not, there's probably a way to make it a club or an organization. Um, so I think, I don't know if you would have learned yet about Quark and SB Engaged, um, but basically, if you haven't, it's there's parts of our website where student orgs just list out activities and events and stuff they have planned. Um, and so knowing that and utilizing that once you get here is gonna be a great way to get involved with any of these because that's kind of like the central place where stuff will be posted and you'll know what's going on on campus. Um, within your residence halls, however, there is going to be a residential council. Um, so essentially, I think most buildings, some of them it's the area has one council for the whole area but everywhere on campus will have you know some kind of a council uh, and essentially what what that means is once you're living in a building you're automatically like a general member of this council you're excuse me you're able to go to meetings you're able to have input hear what's going on etc however with that there are also leadership opportunities so like i know in a lot of the first year buildings well, actually all of the first year buildings uh, where we don't have any returning students you know there's going to be those opportunities right out the gate at the beginning of the year because there's like an executive board that will have like a president, a vice president, a treasurer, things like that. Um, and again, we, with no returning students to the building, we'll need somebody to fill them so those positions could be you. Uh, you know, it's a great leadership opportunity. It's, it's a really fun time and it's mostly it's an opportunity to plan events and stuff that are going to happen within the building. Um, it can be for advocacy, you know, you can use funds to repair, like we repaired the ping pong table in my building this past year because one of the legs was like all jacked up. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of things you can do with it. It's coordinated within the larger body of the Residence Hall Association. Um, they oversee all of the different residential councils. You'll get more info as we get closer to, you know, the actual beginning of the school year. 
um, but this is something that's going to be available to you right there at the start. You'll have access to this, something you can dive in and get involved with. Um, and yeah, so with all of that being said, you know, that's our goal for you all in living on campus and working with us and us working with you, you know, is to allow you all to grow and develop so that we can inspire you all to have big ideas that are going to transform, you know, not only yourself and the lives of those around you, but ultimately the world. Um, as just a couple examples, this is a picture, I believe, of the food pantry here on campus that was started by a student or group of students. Um, you know, and that's now it's thriving. They're a whole thing. Um, additionally, we have like these are the Tabler steps, which are by Tabler community. Um, it's a, again, a student wanted to take it on as like an art project and it's just really cool. You'll see them very much. If you're on this side of campus, you'll see them. Um, they were all painted to look like a piano. Super cool. Walk up them. It's a lot of stairs, but it's worth it. Um, but yeah, I mean, really, this is the end goal, right? You're coming in, you have, you know, what, three to four, maybe longer if you do a master's degree. You know, you have all these years here. Our goal is to help you be successful in that time and grow and, you know, do what you want to do and accomplish all your, you know, your dreams and all of that the fun stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that is all we have. We're excited to see you all this coming fall. Um, I know we've been doing questions in the on the back end, so I don't know if there's actually any questions left. But that number there, the phone number is the number to the central uh, campus residences office. There's also this email reside at stonybrook.edu that you can reach out to. And then at the bottom is the web page for our piece of the website. Um, so yeah, I think I mean, I think all the questions are answered. So that is that is all I have for you. All right. Um... So I'll hop back in then. Um, so peer assistant leader, Brian, would you like to introduce yourself and share maybe some of the student perspective um, on campus residences and maybe your experience for a minute? So hi, I'm Brian. I'm in the computer engineering major and I'm going into my third year here at Sunnybrook University. I came here, I came here as my first year. And in my first year, uh, what, what kind of happened was we had to go to welcome week and that welcome week, or sorry, opening weekend. And during opening weekend, we kind of went to a bunch of presentations and things like that. And then we went back to the resident hall, um, now known as communities. And, and inside of the building, you talk to your RAs and also a bunch of other people that are floating around and you talk to them during the night. And then get involved with fall council is what I did during my uh, first few weeks. And I continue, and I ended up being part of the e-board. And soon after and um, had a blast with everyone else on the executive board planning all the different events and going to the events that I can attend. Thank you. Uh, I'll now ask some questions to campus residences that um, have been common or submitted previously as well. So will study spaces be available in the residence hall? Yes, they will. Um, like we talked about every building, it's gonna look different in every building, but every building has some kind of area set aside. Um, the only real change that still may exist next year is like we said, some areas are probably gonna have a capacity limit. Um, so you may see, you know, you might see 30 desks set up, but maybe only 15 of them have chairs, you know, mostly just to keep from too big of a crowd populating in one area. How will laundry facilities work throughout the semester? So um, it depends on your building. So where I work, um, there are only two laundry, um, there's two washing machines and two dryers um, on each floor. Um, in our bigger first year areas, there might be, there's like nine washers. And so they're really first come first serve. Um, something that we really do try to emphasize is that like, it takes 32 minutes for your clothes to go through a wash cycle. It takes an hour for them to go through a dry cycle. So just making sure that you're being cognizant of the time that you are actually taking up and that once your clothes are done in the washer, you're, you're immediately putting them into the dryer. And once your time's done in the dryer, that you're coming back and getting them. We actually recommend that you actually stay with your clothes at all times as well. So, but yeah, they're first come first serve in the residence hall, but you don't pay for them. Um, and we also do recommend high efficiency detergent if you have it. 
There's an app to keep track of all the laundry if you're doing laundry and if people are taking in and out of the machines. I think it's Laundry View. Yes, Laundry View. Yep. Yeah, and I was gonna say, I would also recommend uh, just double check your detergent. You know, we understand some of y'all are gonna be new to doing laundry. It happens. Um, But, you know, just make sure you're (laughs) asking questions if you're confused. Uh, Make sure you're paying attention that you're not loading the washer too big, that you know how your Tide Pods work. Uh, I can't, I'm pretty sure every year I've ever been a hall director, somebody's almost set the building on fire week one because they accidentally overloaded the washing machine, you know, which set the the motor going. It's, it's always something. So just make sure you're double checking all of that, you know, and if you have questions, there's the professional staff, your hall directors, your RAs, we're all here to help. So yeah. A little comment, Tide pods soak in the detergent, liquid detergent slot, it goes inside of the barrel in the middle. So <laughs> I've seen it happen a lot. Are there safe alternatives to gel or foam mattress toppers? Say that one more time. Are there safe alternatives to gel or foam mattress toppers? Uh, Yes, I believe the preferred alternative is, I think they're down or or cotton, I think is what it is. So like, as long as it's not the foam, I think it's usually that's what it's like a cotton mattress topper or like a down, but it's the one with the feathers in it. Um, You know, and again, I mean, it's it's a fire safety thing if you've ever seen one of the videos you can find them on youtube those foam mattress toppers light up like a christmas tree which also burn very very easily uh so you know just make sure you're paying attention to that and if you have questions honestly you could probably email the reside email check the terms of occupancy and ask you know hey i was going to order this is this going to be prohibited we would rather you all ask and us be able to tell you yes or no then you show up with it and us have to tell you on moving day hey you know, sorry, you spent $80 on this, but you can't have it. It has to go home. All right. If students wanted to raise their bed or submit a work order to fix something in their room, who do they contact to have this done or what's the process to do so? Yeah, so you don't contact anyone. You will submit a work order through our lovely system called SBU Fix It. Um, during the first couple of weeks, you're going to have to understand that like multiple people are submitting work orders to get their beds lifted and things like that. So it might take them some time to get to you, um, but they are going to be working very diligently the first couple of weeks to get your bed. So the, um, yes, yeah, somebody just put it into the chat. You'll use that. Um, you'll put your building, your room number, you'll tell them exactly what you need to be done. And then one of our maintenance staff will come out and do it for you. All right. And with that, I'm going to wrap this session up. So just so you know, this session has been recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube and you will be able to find it on the sign up page that you utilize to sign up for this session. I would like to thank all the panelists and all the attendees for coming. Thank you so much and have a fantastic rest of your day.